What is going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another reaction video. Today we're checking out top 10 Breaking Bad bad guys. So yeah, this is a video from WatchMojo.com. They make lists obviously as you guys know by now. And yeah, top 10 Breaking Bad bad guys. I wasn't aware there was actually 10 bad guys in Breaking Bad. I watched it fairly recently but... And I watched their new, the new film, was it El Camino? Which it was, it was alright, like it was a fitting ending, right? You know, it was like an extra two or three episodes on the end of the last season, you know, which makes sense. I doubt they'll continue on anything at this point after that. They might, but I don't think it'll be a good idea. But yeah, ten bad guys. Obviously, Tuco from season one. Hector from season... Well, he's all the way to like season four. Uh, Gus is the big one. From the last season, Jack, Welker, whatever his name is, that the Nazi dude. Uh, Declan. Who else was there? I, I guess you could say Walter turned into a bad guy at the end, but well, was there 10 bad guys? I mean, the guy who killed Gus's business partner. I, I mean, I guess there was bad guy, that many bad guys, man. But yeah, we're going to get into this list, man. We're going to see who the bad guys are. And yeah, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new. Suggest me videos to watch and let's go. Boom. The meth business attracts some truly Oh, these two people. at the start as well. Welcome obviously. to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Breaking Bad villains. These two are For this list, are. we're looking at the most sinister, <laughs> brutal, and evil antagonists that appeared on the show. <laughs> Damn, man, look at that, look! Although that Walt and Jesse aren't exactly exciting, saints, bro. we'll only be focusing on characters that were introduced as villains look rather than young those who Aaron. became Paul looks in, in this little well, as clip, the huh? series went on. We see you all. Since we'll be talking about villainous storylines and brutal crimes, a spoiler warning and mature content yeah, warning, warning is in effect. More that you, you already knew that. Let's if see. you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Oh, not a shot. Not music. Sound mojo. Okay. Alright. Alright. That's enough. Number 10, Tyrus Kit. Tyrus. All right. I was going to say, Aaron Paul looks really young. If you've watched a new film, the characters just look... I mean, the characters just look old now, some of them. Like, the Todd, he looks old. He's probably going to be in here. He just looks like an old man now, which didn't fit. He looked a little long younger in the series. But... After an enforcer this Victor annoying. is <clears throat> Victor let ruined. go by Gus, Tyrus takes over the position. Yo, you the new guy? Yeah. You got something for me? Like Gus, Tyrus came off as quiet yet intimidating. He excelled at spying oh, on people and could easily sneak up on anyone he wanted. Are you listening to me? Hello? <laughs> Tyrus also seemed to take pleasure in antagonizing others. <sighs> Does the laundry have to be dirty? No. <laughs> no. Whether he was forcing Walt to hide in dirty laundry, electrocuting people, or preparing a poison needle, Tyrus had a sly smile on his face. While we don't know much about his backstory or ambitions, he was quite unquestionably loyal to Gus. I got eyes in the DEA. They just had a visitor. That's why it's fitting that Tyrus's reign of terror ended when he died at Gus's side. Don't punish them. You tell Gus to blame me, not them. He does. Number nine, Lydia Rodar. Oh Quayle. my god. Lydia has got to be the most annoying villain in the entire series because she's so seemingly useless, yet she's so important to the whole thing. And she can literally just destroy everybody. Like, she's literally the top of the food chain. She could literally write everybody out. But it's fitting that she died. Which they confirmed in the El Camino film if you haven't seen it. Sorry if I spoiled that for you, but you knew she died anyway, let's be honest. When you needed a so large whiny. distribution oh, network Steve, to kill your yeah, meth, you turned to Lydia. You want me to kill every man on that list? Yes. <laughs> That's a leap. As head of logistics at Madrigal Electromotive, she originally used her legitimate business connections to support Gus's drug empire. But once his empire fell, Lydia brokered an uneasy alliance with Mike, Jesse, and Walt. I gave him a list of names, but instead of handling it, he's protecting them. So I hired someone else. At that point, there was no option but to add Mike to the list. 
Unlike most Breaking Bad enemies, Lydia was nervous, <laughs> overly was cautious, and couldn't stomach violence. But that doesn't mean she wasn't ruthless. Lydia had no problem throwing her allies under the bus. She ordered a successful hit on her former business associates and tried to do the same to Mike and Walt. Lydia's reliance on underhanded tactics meant her allies could never turn their backs on this businesswoman. You don't think Gus Frank built his distribution network all by himself. Number eight, Domingo Gallardo Molina. Domingo, crazy eight. This guy was the, <laughs> the most useless villain in the entire series. He died in like three episodes. Actually, he didn't, he, 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 he didn't die straight away, but still, he was Also known done as nothing. Crazy Eight. In the first episode, Jesse tries to partner with Crazy Eight and his cousin Emilio to distribute hey, meth. Emilio. But that deal falls apart when Emilio accuses Walt and Jesse of being snitches. Are you really cook up that batch? You an artist. It's a damn shame. Wait. Before Crazy Eight can shoot them, Walt fatally poisons Emilio and imprisons Crazy Eight in Jesse's basement. Don't you have a real name? Domingo. His capture let us see a different side of the villain. You from around town here or someplace else? Like Walter. You getting to know me is not gonna make it easy for you to kill me. Crazy Eight presents himself as personable and thoughtful. He even tries to discourage Walt from cooking meth. This line of work doesn't suit you. But when Crazy Eight gets a chance at freedom, he drops the nice facade and tries to lash out. Walt is then forced to strangle him with a bike lock. By forcing him to take lives, Crazy Eight helped start Walt's descent into darkness. Mm. Number seven. That's true. Before he done that, he wasn't as crazy. After that, he started to get progressively kind of sending on a downward spiral. That's like where he clipped. Kind of like what happened to Jesse as well. Like both of them, they were kind of good guys up until they killed somebody and then they kind of lost it. Like when Jesse killed, uh, what's his face? Gale. Like that's really where he started losing his mind. Fuente, also known as Don Eladio. Was just... Cartel leader Eladio Fuente had one of the longest criminal runs on the series. Two decades before Walt even thought about meth, Don Eladio was co-running the Juarez cartel. Although the Don seemed cordial and playful, he could turn ruthless at any moment. Yo quiero que me digas una cosa. Si tú eres el cocinero, ¿para qué lo necesito él? Gus learned this the hard way when Eladio ordered Gus's partner Max to be shot during a meeting. This is your new employer. You address him as Don Eladio. It's a term of respect. Hola, joven. While the Don lived a life of luxury across the border, his immense cartel influence made him a constant threat to his American associates. Salud. 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 As untouchable as Eladio seemed, Gus eventually found a way to force the long-running cartel leader into a permanent retirement. Number six, Jack Welker. Shortly after higher. Jack's first appearance, he ordered members of his white supremacist gang to take out 10 imprisoned men for a big payday. I mean, that was just the beginning of his savage still. streak. Sorry, man. Just no scenario this, where this, this guy lives. No, 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 listen! Jack threatened the lives of women and children, enslaved Jesse, and fatally shot Hank after Walt begged him not to. But what cemented Jack as a truly despicable person was his nonchalant attitude towards murder. He never he shows remorse care. when he pulls the trigger. Hey, remember, I'm still a kid. The only time Jack showed concern about killing someone was when he was worried Walt's blood might mess up his carpet. What do you want it? Oh, gee, I don't know. Anywhere but my living room. Take him out back. While other villains on this list have at least one redeeming quality, we cannot name a single one of Jack's virtues. Number five, That's why I say he's Hector Salamanca. Hector Salamanca was once a fearsome enforcer for the Juarez cartel. Yeah, but Hector was like a main villain for a while, you know? Uh, I guess he wasn't a main villain. He was kind of an anti-hero towards the end when when came He was came so down loyal to his job and family that he'd rather take That's jail so time cool. than rat them out. I guess the twins are gonna win here But Hector was so cruel that he nearly drowned one of his nephews just to make a point. Me. After years of terrorizing people, Hector suffered a stroke that left him confined to a wheelchair and unable to speak. Although he could only communicate using a bell, he was still a huge threat. Hector prevented Tuco from being poisoned, 
killed mercilessly, and defied the DEA multiple times. This guy took a shit on that floor. Oh, man. But his most impressive accomplishment was taking Gus down with just one finger. Number four, Todd Alquist. Did that guy win any awards for playing Hector? Or oh, I'm assuming that row actor obviously hasn't got any medical condition like that. So did he win any awards? Missed. I mean, Todd if was a If you look problem. up the definition of monster in the dictionary, you'll see Todd's cold eyes staring back at you. Damn, you guys thought of everything. When he first joined Walt's crew, he seemed like a soft-spoken guy who was too yeah. eager to impress his boss. But when he shot a young boy to cover up a robbery, we saw how monstrous he could be. You know, at the end of the day, it was him or us, and I chose us. And I would do it again. After convincing his uncle to enslave Jesse, Todd killed Jesse's ex-girlfriend to keep him in line. He also threatened Walt's infant daughter to keep Skylar quiet. Camille, I'm gonna need you to say it. I will not say anything about her. Ever. Through it all, the most infuriating thing about Todd is he frequently apologizes to his victims while hurting them. Just so you know, this isn't personal. <laughs> Needless to say, we were not sorry to see him meet a violent end. Number three, Marco and Lionel Salamanca, also known as the Cousins. Wherever these twin brothers go, death is sure to follow. Lionel and Marco Salamanca were a pair of mostly silent assassins for the Juarez cartel. Although the deadly pair mainly operated in Mexico, they journeyed to America to avenge their cousin Tuco's demise. On the way, they killed a literal truckload of people just because they were recognized. Once they arrived, the twins tried to take out Walt before Gus redirected their fury onto Hank. Una gente de la DEA, pero Bolsa dice que la DEA está fuera de límites. Al norte de la frontera es mi territorio, mi decir. Fortunately, Hank was able to mortally wound and severely injure Marco and Lionel respectively. No. Muy fácil. This man's a too If it wasn't easy. for Hank and Gus, these twins may have continued to silently take lives with their silver axe and brutal methods. That's funny that this guy actually got an axe to clap him with. Number two. Alberto Tuco Salamanca. Tuco was a problem. Booyah! Wow! <laughs> the most unpredictable villain that, in the series was just... drug distributor Tuco Salamanca. He could go from happily snorting Not... his own product to having a violent outburst faster than you can say that tight. Totally... Uh, tight, 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 yeah! During one of Tuco's insane mood swings, he beat one of his men to death just for speaking out of turn. <sighs> I'm relaxed. I'm relaxed. After Walt and Jesse try to do business with him, Tuco threatens, assaults, and kidnaps both of them. With a combination of luck and quick thinking, they're able to escape his violent grip. Despite his vicious nature, Tuco genuinely cared about and provided for his family. Seeing as some of that family was in the Juarez cartel, it's easy to see where Tuco inherited his violent streak. We tried to poison you because you're an insane, degenerate piece of filth. And you deserve to die. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe I'm to I'm not our being funny, but in that situation, bro, the guy with the gun is not just gonna be like, the fuck you say, bro? He's gonna pop both of them. Like, I don't understand why it takes them so long to kill Channel people. And ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have right, the option buddy. to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. All right. If you're on your phone, Chill. make sure you go into your settings and switch on no, notifications. I don't have notifications on. Number one, Gustavo I mean, he's Fring. He's the main guy. You couldn't tell Gus Fring was a notorious drug kingpin by looking at him, but he prefers it that way. Gentlemen, is everything to your satisfaction? Gus spent years building up a reputation this as the funny. charitable founder of Los Pollos Hermanos. Behind the scenes, he was building a drug empire so powerful that his former enemies wanted to work with him. Gus balanced both lives by making such complex moves that even his closest allies couldn't predict what he would do next. If you try to interfere, 
this becomes a much simpler matter. I will kill your wife. I will kill your son. I will kill your infant daughter. He also kept a constant air of professionalism, whether he was discussing money or murders. And while Gus Hold wasn't that. afraid to get his hands dirty, he preferred diplomacy over violence. I don't believe fear to be an effective motivator. I want investment. Although his empire eventually crumbled, was he was arguably the best person to wear the crown of drug kingpin. That's true. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. That last statement is guaranteed is 100% true. He was by far the best drug kingpin. Like, start off, I guess, with Tuco when he was running it. I mean, you can say Crazy A, but we don't really know too much about him. But Tuco, the guy was crazy. You know, he wasn't obviously like the scale, but Gus, like, he was running it to the extent where he would never get caught. No one ever suspected him. Nothing like that. No problems. When Walt took over, he couldn't control the money. He couldn't, you know, he had Mike. What Mike didn't, wasn't loyal to him. Like, it was the smoothest when, when Gus had it. But obviously, Walt was not about to sacrifice his life for that. So obviously, when Walt took over, started requesting the help of guys like Jack and trying to do deals with Declan, it kind of went to shit, right? But yeah, man, thank you all for watching, man. Let me know if you agree with this list. I think that, I mean, I'm assuming I didn't just put it in any old order. You, you could probably switch some people around. But yeah, thank you all for watching, man. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.